186,000 refugees live here. The Kakuma camp has no flushing toilets. Instead, people use pit latrines that are decommissioned once they're full. But when it rains, human waste sometimes leaks out and can lead to outbreaks of diarrhea and cholera. A pilot project is hoping to change that. Uh, you know here there's a lot of pit latrine. After some few years, the pit fills up and then there is no space to dig more the pit latrine. So we came in a solution providing container-based toilet, which addresses the issue of the space uh, for the camp and also issue of the how to contain the waste. It's called the Sanivation Project and has led to the installation of 500 toilets in the camp. They provide 5,000 households with access to clean toilets. The waste is collected twice a week. About 30 refugees have been hired to collect and process it. I work as a collector of the waste from the community, which is offered here by sanitation in the camp. So we help the community in order for cleanliness and sanitation. That's what the work that I'm doing. After the waste is collected, it's brought to this processing center where it gets mixed with charcoal dust. When combined, the two create a form of fuel that's more sustainable than regular coal. It burns for twice as long, but costs the same. These waste processors use solar energy. They make briquettes that don't smell like feces. They are sold at the same price as charcoal, about 20 cents a packet. Project managers say at first people were skeptical about using human waste for their cooking. It doesn't matter to me that it's made from treated waste. I spend less on briquettes compared with charcoal. I am happy to use briquettes. Many people at the camp say they now prefer to use the briquettes over coal. And officials hope the project will not only save energy, but also improve the people's quality of life. Omar Kablan, TRT World Kakuma Refugee Camp, Kenya.